Alright guys, Brett from Death Angle Whitewater here again with another installment of First Aid for Paddlers. Um, mostly today is going to be about bleeding and stopping bleeding. Um, once again, I'm going to go over my training and why I'm kind of talking about this. I have been a EMT for about 10 years now. Um, I've been at a uh, trauma center for about 3 years now, working in the ER, and I was on a ambulance service uh, for 4 years as well as uh, 2 years of not being old enough to work. So um, I do have quite a bit of experience with this. However, I am going to tell you this is not any sort of official training and I'm not liable for anything that you may learn today. Um, I want to start off today's training actually with a website that you should go check out. An absolutely amazing website called stopthebleed.org. Um, these guys have been focusing a lot on teaching people really just the basics of how to stop bleeding and they're saving a lot of lives with it. It is really turning out to be a really great training process. Um, if you go online to their website, which I will drop down below, there will be a you know a bunch of different places around the country that you can go and you can take these classes. Um, I'm sure you can even take some of them online. Um, when the guy comes out, he does a really good job. They talk mostly about tourniquets, about quick clot, and about just doing whatever it takes to get the bleeding to stop. Um, that being said, today I want to mostly go over um, some actual medical equipment, you know, gauze, that kind of stuff that you should keep in your med kit. Um, I'm also going to go over some stuff though that you can kind of make shift into something to stop the bleeding because um, you really do have to do whatever it takes, especially for us who are out on the river. You know, it could be a two, three day trip, it could be a 20 day trip, who knows. You just need to have some preparation ready for this. So real quick, we're just going to kind of loosely go over basically how you stop bleeding these days. Um, I say these days because the medical community kind of changes their mind from time to time. When I first started in EMS, they were saying absolutely no tourniquets, period. Um, unless it was the last straw, unless somebody was going to die if you didn't put it on there. Nowadays, uh, the new train of thought, or I guess back to the old train of thought, is uh, just stop the bleeding no matter what, and they can save limbs a lot better now than they used to be able to. So tourniquets are back in. But um, just the principles of stopping the bleeding are pressure, elevation, and if that doesn't do it, you're going to go straight to a tourniquet. Okay. Um, some people say don't even worry about elevating it, just if direct pressure doesn't get the job done, it's time for a tourniquet. Um, so we're going to go over what you would use uh, to hold pressure or to uh, put over the wound to soak up the blood and try to stop the bleeding. Alright, so let's go over some different things that you should have in your med kit um, for while you're out there on the river. Uh, one of the best things to stop bleeding is gauze, right? Um, these pack and travel really well. They go into a med kit really easily. They are very flat. Um, they're about, this one is 4x4. Four four. You can also buy sizes that are 2x2s, two um, but they pack into a med kit really, really nicely. You can fit, I think I have 10 to 15 of these sheets um, in my med kit at all times. Another one I really like to use are these abdominal pads. Um, these ones are really, really nice. They soak up way more blood than just your average gauze pad. Um, it folds out to a larger size. It really gets the job done. So, um, if you're going to bandage a wound, right, let's say that you have a cut right here on the top of your arm, let's say you're out scouting, you fall down, you catch a sharp rock, and you just get a big laceration right here on your arm. Um, you're going to take your gauze, whether it's this abdominal pad or a 4x4, four four, whatever you're going to use, you're going to throw it right there on the wound, and you're going to hold pressure. And after you've held pressure for a minute and you think that the blood's starting to stop or starting to clot off, then it's time to dress the wound. Okay, um, and you have a few different options to dress the wounds. Um, one of the most popular is a gauze roll, okay? Um, these are pretty small. You can also get one that's a lot bigger than this. They sell, all, they're really cheap. Um, but you just are gonna use this and you're gonna unroll it around uh, the bandage area. And then you're gonna secure it either with tape or whatever you can at that point in time. Um, another one of my favorite dressings out there right now is foam tape. Foam tape is really, really nice. Um, it is waterproof. It is stretchy and it compresses. So if you uh, want to, you can throw this on there and it will actually do a lot of compression for you, do a lot of that direct pressure for you. Just like that. It really just holds it on there. Of course, I'd go over it one or two more times just to really get it on there. Um, this will also keep the water out of the wound if you want it to. Um, but if you don't want to use this foam tape because it is pretty big and bulky, it's not very heavy though. Um, vet wrap is another really big um, dressing that I like to use a lot of the time, especially in the ER. It doesn't stick to hair, ouch, like this does. This does stick to hair. Um, 
and it also has a compressive form to it so it will get tighter and it will hold pressure on the wound which is really what you want to get the bleeding to stop right we're doing direct pressure a little bit of elevation bandage it dress it um, so those are just some of the main basic things that you can keep in your med kit all right now we're going to go over some tourniquet stuff here uh, this one is called a cat tourniquet this is one of the biggest tourniquets out there on the market right now. They're super easy to use, they're super popular, they're not terribly expensive. Um, and I carry two on the river with me usually. There's usually one in my med kit and there's usually one in my dry bag. For you know whatever reason, if those two get separated, then, then I can have one in each. So these are super easy to use. I'm gonna go over it really quick. And then I'm also gonna show you some other things that can be used as tourniquets out on the river. Um, so, we're gonna go over that same kind of wound idea, right? So let's say you got a cut right here, right on top, and you can't get the bleeding to stop um, with just pressure and bandaging. Um, these cat tourniquets are super easy to use. They're designed to be used uh, one-handed. Um, There's just one strap, pulls through like that, goes around the outside. You're gonna open up this strap right here. And then this is called a windlass. This is one of the main parts, one of the most important parts of a tourniquet, and really what makes it work, what makes it do what it does. So I've got this cinched down um, by the uh, pull strap here. Now this windlass, as I turn it, is going to turn and cut off the blood supply to my arm, which is what is still bleeding, right? And once you get that tight enough, once the bleeding stops, you're going to tuck it inside this middle, or not, yeah, this little housing right here. And then from there, you're going to take your tail of the tourniquet, you're going to throw it inside that same little hole, and then you're going to cover this. And that so here's the windlass in place. So now, here's your cut. It's above the wound, below the joint. You always wanna go below the joint, if at all possible. And now the blood supply is cut off to this lower part of my body, but I'm not gonna to bleed to death, okay? That's why it's important. If you can't get the bleeding to stop with direct pressure, then you gotta to go to the tourniquet. Um, now, let's go over some other things that we can use as tourniquets. Something that I like to use a lot more um, these are nice and they're great for absolute emergency situations but since I'm in the ER so much and since I carry one of these with me most of the time anyways a blood pressure cuff is one of my all-time favorite tourniquets okay um, one problem that a lot of people have with tourniquets is that they over tighten them and that's what does all of the damage and that's kind of why tourniquets went out of style a while back is because too much damage is being done if you use a blood pressure cuff as a tourniquet it's about four inches wide, okay? That gives you a lot lesser chance of doing damage long-term being so wide. And you can control how high you pump it up, right? Your average blood pressure for a healthy person is 120 over 80. Let's say in this, you know, scary moment in which you're uh, a lot more scared your blood pressure shoots up, you can pump this up and you can keep a real close eye on just how tight you're putting it. All it has to do is make it above the patient's blood pressure and they're gonna stop bleeding, okay? Um, that's another one I really like to use. Now, let's say you need to make your own tourniquet out of something. Um, there's a lot of different things that I think we have out there on the river. Um, bandanas would be a great one. Um, a triangular bandage would be a great one. You're just going to tie it around above the wound, right? Same thing, above the wound, below the joint, if at all possible. Um, we're going to use this uh, buff that I have as an example. Okay, so you're going to do the same thing. You're going to slide it over above the wound, below the joint, right? And then you're gonna stick something in here that is gonna act like a windlass. Um, I don't know if you need to use your knife, if you need to use a paddle, whatever you need to do, something stick-shaped and strong enough to not break under the pressure. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna twist it around like this, just like the windlass on the cat tourniquet worked. And once you have the blood flow cut off, then you're gonna secure the windlass to the body, okay? Okay, another one of the options for a makeshift tourniquet, if you absolutely have to, an NRS strap. Okay, not necessarily the most comfortable thing, not the best thing ever, but in case of an emergency, it could be used. Okay, this one's a two-footer. Hopefully, this will get the job done as far as cutting off the blood supply. But, really, all you gotta do is tighten down that strap. You know, it's not gonna be the easiest thing to do with uh, by yourself, but if you had to, you could just pull that tight, and hopefully, you can get off cut off the blood supply just by pulling like that. Now it's gonna pinch the skin and it's gonna hurt and it's gonna be terrible, but just like before, at least you're not dying. If you had to, and if you had a longer strap, you could do a double wrap around. That way you're not pulling so hard directly off the cam buckle 
and the first strap that you do your wraparound with, you can then stick a windlass in and rotate around to try to cut off that blood supply. All right, so another thing that we can use the NRS strap for here is a dressing uh, for a wound if we have to. Um, also, I wanna go over just like, you know, if you don't have gauze, if you don't have a med kit, if you didn't bring one or if it got lost in a flip somehow, um, if you have to, you can use just about anything to stop the bleeding. Um, I've used shirts before. If you fold them up nicely, get a nice flat surface, put the shirt directly down on top of the wound. And then if you need to, you can use one of these NRS straps, just go directly over the wound again. Stop doing that way. Um, it doesn't need to be as tight as a tourniquet, but you can still use it to cinch down and hold that shirt in place. And hopefully it will be enough pressure to stop that bleeding and keep the shirt in place so that you don't rip out any clots that you form in the process. All right, we're just going to go over a few more things here. Closing down, we're just going to go back over everything, okay? You have a wound, get something to cover it with, direct pressure, and then dress it with something, right? If you have a gauze roll, foam tape, vet wrap, whatever you can, put something on the wound, secure it in place, add pressure, add elevation. If that doesn't stop the bleeding, okay, if direct pressure and elevation does not stop the bleeding, you want to go do a tourniquet. Um, when you're doing a tourniquet, you always want to go at least two inches above the wound if you can. Um, that's usually preferred, but you also want to go below the joints if at all, if at all possible. Okay, the main reason we go below the joints is that if for some god-awful reason something happens, whether bad infection, necrosis, or it's a couple days until you can get to medical care and this uh, tissue ends up dying, then prosthetics work better from below the joint than they do above the joint. Okay. Um, that's why we do that below the joint. You want to get above the wound so that you actually um, get the bleeding stopped is why you're going above the wound, um, at least two inches above it, because a lot of times what happens is the severed blood vessel will um, constrict back up into the body. And so that's why you want to go you know, at least two inches above it. That way you can still try to get a good grasp on that blood vessel that is the one that's bleeding. Um, even if you do tourniquet, you still want to bandage and wrap every wound. Okay, you want to keep it clean if at all possible, keep it dry if at all possible. Um, basically, if this ever happens, it is time to go. Okay, if you have to put a tourniquet on, if you have to do anything like that, it's time to go. Call for a medevac, hike out of the river, do whatever you have to do, just get off of the river and get heading towards definitive medical care. Okay, all this uh, being said, again, please find one of those Stop the Bleed classes. Please go to their website, check them out. Please learn as much as possible. Um, I hope this has helped you guys out. I hope that uh, you don't really ever have to use this, but I hope that this knowledge that I'm giving you today will help someday, even if it's not on the river. It's good knowledge. Stop the bleeding, no matter what, period. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day.